How hard was it to work with the little daredevils? Yes, those kids could literally kick the adults' asses, so the film crew had to be very careful around them. But seriously, how did the production team handle all the challenges involved in working with kids? Vivian Blair, aka Guppy, couldn't help but squint while filming outdoor scenes on sunny days, which could literally ruin the shooting schedule. That's why the film crew immediately came up with a simple and genius idea. They gave her a pair of sunglasses. Yep, Guppy's iconic look was born out of necessity, not style. And of course, when the crew saw the girl in those sunglasses, they realized immediately she could wear them everywhere, like even inside an alien ship. Simple and creative. Fun fact, the movie director Robert Rodriguez was born into a family of 10 children and he raised five kids. That's why he knows perfectly well how to deal with children. So when, for example, Yaya Goslin, aka Missy, got sad on set, Mr. Rodriguez was able to easily cheer her up. Or when little Vivian was bored on set, the director found his own way to entertain the actress. He'd play cards with her. Yep, Mr. Rodriguez is totally old school. Forget about cell phones. Just grab an ordinary deck of cards and play the girl's favorite card games with her. Vivian adores Go Fish and Avocado Smash. And it wasn't only about having fun between takes for her. Those cards ended up playing a major role in helping get the right reactions out of the little actress whenever it was time to film. I need you more excited, so imagine it's Avocado Smash, Rodriguez would say. And finally, he'd get the reaction he needed. The director's five kids also helped him overcome some of the production challenges. For example, Rodriguez's daughter personally did all of Oho's predictive drawings. Remember this scene? The film crew didn't know in advance where exactly each kid would be standing. That's why Rodriguez's daughter was present on the set to capture the actor's position live. And the director's 15-year-old son designed the alien ship's interior. Yes, this was created by a teenager! Starting to understand where all that crazy imagination comes from, Rodriguez's other kids helped him with digital compositing, producing, and even with the movie score. Yep, 20-year-old Rebel Rodriguez composed the music by himself. If you're still not impressed, here's one more crazy fact for you. Rodriguez's kids helped him to invent all the superpowers for the We Can Be Heroes characters. Slow-mo, noodles, acapella, guppy, and the rest of the gang were created from his kids' imaginations. So when we say that We Can Be Heroes is a kid's movie, we actually mean it. Talking about inventing superhero powers, Rodriguez and his kids invented 15 badass characters. Yes, some of them were deleted from the script, cause, you know, working with 11 kids is way too challenging. But what superhero characters were left out? We'll give you the craziest example. Imagine a boy who has toxic farts. Yep, this deleted superhero kid was meant to knock out the enemies just by breaking wind. Well, we definitely need this guy in the We Can Be Heroes sequel. But enough about farts. Let's talk about the very first challenge the film crew met, the audition challenge. We're not gonna make it! Are you insane? How are we supposed to get up there? Netflix knew that they had only one chance to make the right choice for each of the characters. If they had failed, the movie would have sucked. But admit it, every kid in the film is so remarkable. How did they manage to do such brilliant auditions? Again, Robert Rodriguez is to thank, as he had previously worked with children on the Spy Kids franchise and the adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. He already knew how to cast kids with awesome potential. That you can tell by their personality, it's not necessarily the one that's the most bubbly and the most showbiz one, it's the quieter one, the introspective one that you can just feel a connection with, that you know you're going to get a lot out of them. Like, take for example Dylan Henry Lau, aka Slow Mo. In real life, this cute little fellow is super calm, quiet, and passive, while at the same time he brings a vivid energy into the movie. Hey, Slow Mo! Hi. So, right after the audition process ended, the hardest part started how to teach all the kids not only to act on a big production set, but also to cooperate with each other. Again, Mr. Rodriguez knows the answer. What happens is you create an environment where your life, real life through in the movie mimics the story because it helps uh, reinforce how they all have to work together. You all have to get along. We all have to accept each other. All those lessons are in the movie and they're also outside of the movie. Wow. Sounds like a genius way to treat kids in an action film. Talking about action, the next challenge was to pick the stunt doubles for kids. You know what the hardest part about that was? 
um, that there's no such thing as a kid stunt double. Which actually means that the We Can Be Heroes young cast did all those crazy tricks by themselves. Because they don't have doubles, they have to do it themselves. So they have to really be able to do this. And it blows your mind what the kids are able to do. Another unexpected fact is the stunt coordinators had only two weeks to train the kids. So it was pretty much a crash course. Luckily, most of the kids had done karate classes previously, which made things much easier for the crew. Though karate wasn't enough to cover all the stunts. The 11-year-old Yaya shared that her very first time being harnessed and swung up on wires happened on the set of We Can Be Heroes. And boy, she enjoyed every single moment of it. It was the same for 8-year-old Vivian. By the way, did you know that the actress who performed Guppy knows Taekwondo? Yes, it wasn't a big deal for her to easily knock out those adults. She's got shark strength! Indeed she has! Though there was one specific moment that little Vivienne would like to forget. While filming an epic battle scene, the actress accidentally stepped on a green screen floor, which was actually… not flooring, but a fabric that covered a giant hole. Yeah, the poor kid went way down into the abyss. Have a nice nap! But luckily, everything was fine. Thanks to those Taekwondo classes, Vivienne wasn't hurt. And it was only the adults who got a fright. Not Guppy. Besides an accidental visit down a set hole, the We Can Be Heroes stunt coordinators made sure that each child felt as safe as possible. And being 100% honest, there were some moments where the stunt doubles helped the kid actors. But those stunts remained completely invisible. Here's a perfect example for you. Remember this scene? He's cheating! I can't compete with that! Here's how it looked on set. He's cheating! I can't compete with that! And there was another man in a green costume who broke the table in a different shot. And action. Oh. Yep. Even if the We Can Be Heroes kids know karate, because of safety reasons, there was no need to ask them to break tables. Or to smash a gym ball. But again, after the ball exploded, Andrew Diaz, aka Facemaker, did his stunt by himself. One, go! <laughs> well done, Andrew. You deserve the applause. So I wanted to do it in an inspiring way. The message of the story was really, the kids will take over. They need to take over. Those are the real words of wisdom. The whole idea of We Can Be Heroes is about the new generation growing up and taking responsibility for their future. The planet no longer belongs to adults. It belongs to our little heroes. And our job is to love them and support them in being much better than we are. When kids my age see this movie, I hope that they feel they can be heroes. Well said, wild card. Hey, we know that you're huge fans of We Can Be Heroes. So check out these videos as well. We're sure you're gonna love them. Thanks for watching. Take care.